Hi, my name is Josh Fernandez and I'm the Senior Pastor of Grace Life Church and we would love to extend an invitation to you and your family and your friends to one of our services this coming Easter weekend. On Good Friday, we have two services, both shorter services, communion services, a bit more reflective services, one at 9am in our Ellenbrook congregation at Woodlake and the other one is at 7pm in our Malaga facility. We'd love to invite you to come to one or even both of those services, communion services on Good Friday coming up. Also on the Sunday, we have celebration family services at 10 o'clock, both locations, Malaga and Ellenbrook. Make sure you come ready to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. Looking forward to seeing you, whoever you are, wherever you're from, you're extraordinarily welcome. See you this coming Easter weekend. My name is Globin. This is our online service replay and coming up is the latest sermon shared at our Malaga location. I want, if you can, just get your Bibles, pull them out, Daniel chapter 10. And um, I was given uh, this prompting in our last prayer meeting that we had, an encounter meeting almost two weeks ago here, and I feel to share it for them now. Daniel chapter 10. Now, Daniel chapter 10, 11, and 12 are fantastic chapters. The last three chapters of the book of Daniel. Daniel was used mightily, um, even in, in, in a political sense. He was a leader. And I, I want to submit to you that Daniel... The, Daniel chapter 10 sets up a scene for what is revealed to him in Daniel chapter 11 and 12 for what was to come for the nation of Israel in a general sense, but it also is prophetic and even apocalyptic for a future setting. Okay, we have what we call in scripture a law of double reference. When a prophecy is given, it's not just for what's going to happen soon, but it, it is also to be seen in a future sense. Um, you can see this, uh, and we're not going to go into it today, but in Daniel chapter 11, there is reference to the Great Tribulation, the rise of the Antichrist. You've got a mix in Daniel with other books like Isaiah and Revelation. There are references in there. I want to encourage you, uh, do some homework, open up your Bible, spend some time with the Holy Spirit, pay attention to what he's saying, partic particularly in, in Daniel chapter 11 and 12, because we see in these chapters probably the most detailed uh, prophetic uh, scripture that we have. It is incredibly detailed. And so what we're going to read about in Daniel chapter 10 today is very important. That is, how did Daniel get to hear and experience, receive such an incredible prophecy? H how did that happen? What was the scene that was established? That's what we'll be talking about today. Are you ready? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the ministry of your Holy Spirit and importantly, the power of your word. And we ask that you would illuminate our minds and our hearts. We just want to know what is the Spirit of God saying to your church in this hour. We thank you so very much. And all of God's children said, Amen. Okay, Daniel chapter 10. We're going to read the whole chapter together. Are you ready for that? Okay, wonderful. I'm going to read from the English Standard Version. And uh, I'm going to have a few little pauses along the way because it's a decent sized chapter. And um, let's start from verse 1. It says, In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a word was revealed to Daniel, who was named Belteshazzar. And the word was true, and it was a great conflict and he understood the word and and had understanding of the vision let's take a pause Daniel was an older man he was around about 90 years old he wasn't a young buck he was around about 90 years old and it says that something was revealed to him it was something that was a little bit frightening and scary talks all about that in chapter 11 and 12 
But it also says this, he understood the word and had understanding of the vision. That is, he understood what he heard and he understood what he saw. I don't know if you're anything like me, but I, I, I want to know, God, what are you saying and what are you showing? It's one thing to, 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 to hear what God is saying. It's another thing to understand what he's saying. In the same way that God can show us a picture, but what does that picture actually mean? This is why people like Joseph was incredible. He wasn't just a, a, a prince of dreams. He interpreted. He understood the dreams. So here's a little encouragement for us. When we hear something or see something, Lord, would you help us understand? How does that understanding happen? It's by the Holy Spirit. We can't truly have a great understanding or insight without the Holy Spirit. We need him. So we press on. Verse 2, in those days I, Daniel, was mourning for three weeks. I ate no delicacies, no meat or wine entered my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at oil, excuse me, at all for the full three weeks. So here we see for three weeks, uh, some would refer to this as a fast. He doesn't call it a fast. It's a season of mourning for him. And as a 90-odd-year-old man, he's going without some luxury items that he had full access to. He put away delicacies to eat. He put away things to wash his body, fine oils and so forth. And he went without as a, as, as a move of sacrifice and sobriety and humility to seek God. That's what it was. It wasn't just for the sake of going without. He, 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 he was doing something to position his heart, to posture his heart toward the Lord. Verse 4. On the 24th day of the first month, if you've got, uh, let's say, a new, new Living Translation, it'll tell you on April 23, okay? That's just according to the calendar. It wasn't on the 24th day from the beginning of Daniel's morning or fasting. That took 21 days. It was on the 24th day of that particular uh, month. As I was standing on the bank of the great river, that is the Tigris, I lifted up my eyes. So important for us to remember to lift up our eyes. Is that a word for you? Lift up your eyes. And I looked. And behold, a man clothed in linen with a belt of fine gold from Euphrates around his waist. His body was like beryl. His face like the appearance of of lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze and the sound of his words like the sound of a multitude. Can you imagine being faced with this type of a person? How would you respond? This is what he saw. Some say that that was Jesus himself, the pre-incarnate Christ, or we say a theophany or a Christophany more accurately. Um, I'd say most people, including myself, don't believe that that's the case because we find out later that this man needed assistance from an angelic being. But nonetheless, a message was given through this person. And it says in verse 7, I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men who were with me did not see the vision, but a great trembling fell upon them, and they fled to hide themselves. So I was left alone, and I saw this great vision and no strength was left in me my radiant appearance was fearfully changed and I retained no strength let's think about that for a second so Daniel was a man who was after God's heart he was pursuing him he he, he, he had a heart of humility desiring to understand and perceive correctly and um, he had an experience where he saw a vision there were other men with him, but they didn't see the vision, but they knew something was happening. And what did they do? They fled in fear. Just like, let's say, Saul on the road to Damascus, he saw a vision of Jesus, didn't he, in Acts chapter 9. He saw a vision of Jesus, and there were men with him who didn't see the same vision, but in fear they ran. That tells us right there that you can somehow perceive 
the power and the presence of God, but still not understand or perceive correctly. It is absolutely very possible to be in the very presence of God and miss him. But God revealed himself to someone whose heart was set on him. And Daniel was that man. He saw an incredible vision. Oh, Lord, give us eyes to see. Verse 9, then I heard, so we've gone from seeing to hearing, then I heard the sound of his words, and as I heard the sound of his words, I fell on my face in deep sleep with my face toward the ground. As he heard the words, there was a response in him. It says, I fell on my face in a deep sleep with my face to the ground. Verse 10, and behold, a hand touched me. And set me trembling on my hands and knees. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly loved. Let's pause. That's the first thing he hears. That's the first thing he hears from this messenger. Daniel, man greatly loved. Daniel sees something. He hears something. He falls down. He, 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 he then goes into some sort of sleep perhaps and then the words that he hear man or Daniel man greatly loved in fact this is the second time that Daniel gets this this message in the previous chapter of chapter 9 I think it's verse maybe 23 he gets the same message man greatly loved is that a message for you this morning to know that you are greatly loved You can see and hear all you want, but what God wants you to know first and foremost is that he's for you and that he loves you. Oh, Daniel, man greatly loved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright for now I have been sent to you. And and this is what I've got underlined in my Bible. And when he had spoken this word to me, I stood up trembling. When he had spoken this word to me, when he spoke, if you go down to verse hmm, verse 19, we see the angel say something again, O man greatly loved, it reinforces. Fear not, peace be with you, be strong and of good courage. And as he spoke to me, I was strengthened. As he he spoke to me, I was strengthened. As God speaks to us, we are strengthened. As God speaks to us, we can stand upright. As God speaks to us, we live, we move, we have our being in a very real sense. Do you know his word? Have you heard his word? Have you experienced his word? Have you savored his word? As he speaks, oh Lord, may I hear your word that I might stand upright, that I may be strengthened. When he had spoken this word to me, I stood up trembling. And then it says this. Then he said to me, fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and humbled yourself before your God, your words have been heard. And I have come because of your words. And this is something really interesting here. And this gives us a little bit of insight. It says, The prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. New Living Translation interprets that. The spirit prince. Who's got the New Living Translation or another translation that says spirit prince? So it's not just talking about a prince, a physical prince. It's talking about in a spirit, spiritual sense. Here. Remember, he's in a vision. He's seeing something now. And he's getting this angelic messenger come to him. The spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days, but Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. For I was left there with the kings of Persia and came to make you understand what is to happen to your people. In the latter days, for the vision is for days 
yet to come. Let's go back a second. Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and humbled yourself before your God, your words have been heard, and I have come because of your words. If you're taking notes and you haven't already begun, write this down. A humble heart attracts a listening ear. A humble heart attracts a listening ear. It was the setting of Daniel's heart to understand and the setting of his heart to be humble that set this whole scene up. How long did it take for Daniel's words to be heard? How long? How many days? One day. But how long was he praying for? 21 days. But when was he first heard? After one day. And what the angelic being said to him, for from the first day that your heart was right, your words were heard. There was a humility in his heart. He wasn't there demanding and, and, and naming and claiming with a sense of arrogance. His, his heart was set toward God. He was positioning and posturing his heart. God, give me understanding. I want to know what's going to happen with my people. What's going to happen with Israel? What's going to happen with us? And from the very first day, heaven heard. Maybe you haven't yet got your answer. But you need to know from this moment, from day one, you've been heard. Day one. Have you ever come across someone and all they ever do is they arrogantly, pridefully talk about themselves all of the time and you can tell, man, this person is very self-interested, self-inflated, very uh, self-conceited and they spend half an hour telling you, how are you going? Biggest mistake you've ever made. They spend the next 30, 45 minutes telling you about how they're going. They say, oh, that's enough about me. What do you think about me, right? <laughs> but the Bible says that God is attracted to one who has humility. What does it say that God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble? What does it say in Isaiah chapter 66 verse 2? If we can put that up please. All these things my hand has made and so all these things came to be, declares the Lord. But this is the one to whom I will look. He who is humble and contrite in spirit and trembles at my word. A healthy, reverential, deep, awesome fear of God. This is God. And the right response is, Lord, I come to you. Humility, Lord, please help me. Give me insight. Give me understanding. Lord, I come before you. And I know you're for me. I know that you love me. I need you. Day one, his words were heard. We can read from this that from day one, and it took 21 days for this uh, messenger to come and give a message. 21 days. He was heard on day one, but he didn't get his answer until day 21. He was heard on day one, but he got his answer on day 21. And what was happening through those 21 days? What was Daniel doing? He was praying for 21 days. That's what he was doing. Never underestimate a humble and contrite spirit in prayer and what it's doing in the heavenly realm. You may not see something. But that doesn't mean nothing's happening. I've got this newfound fascination with plants. And just because I don't see the leaves growing above the surface doesn't mean the roots aren't penetrating beneath. Very important to not make decisions on what you see on one level. I wonder how often when we're praying, we're seeing no response, no answer. What's going on in the spirit? What's happening behind the scenes for those 21 days 
Daniel was pursuing. He was seeking. He was asking. He was knocking. I think any one day is about your friend. I have an encouragement for us to keep on praying. And also an encouragement that, just know this, have confidence that every prayer matters to God. Every prayer offered to him matters. If you're here this morning and you feel like you've given up, maybe you're streaming from home and you feel like you've, you've given up. Every prayer offered matters to God. Your words matter to God. Second point, the real battle is in the unseen realm. The real battle is in the unseen realm. Verse 13, the prince or the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days, but Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I was left there with the kings of Persia. And I came to make you understand what is to happen to your people in the latter days, for the vision is for days yet to come. The real battle is in the unseen realm. Such an important prophetic passage that we're given in chapter 11 and 12 was set up by Daniel. Who is shown not just what's to happen, but how did we get there? Well, there is a battle going on in the heavenly realms. And so let's picture this. A messenger, an angelic messenger, is dispatched from the Father. He is dispatched and sent out. And we understand that there are angels and fallen angels. You understand that, right? There is a spirit world that's taken. We may not see it, but doesn't mean that it's not real. In fact, the Bible says in Corinthians that what is seen is temporal and what is unseen is eternal. So we must fix our eyes on that which is eternal. And in a kingdom sense, remember, we are just citizens passing through what we see and experience and, and, and touch and taste in the natural. We're just passing through. There is a greater reality, a deeper reality, a more real reality. Perhaps we should be praying, Lord, give us clarity for the greater reality. But here we see there is a, a, a dispatching of a word through a messenger, but there is a hindrance, a stopping from a prince of Persia. What do we know about Persia? Persia in that time was a highly paganistic area. A, 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 a people group that were pagans and did not believe and did not bow the knee to God. And they had given, uh, in a sense, a power to a stronghold, this prince of Persia, who was withstanding that delivery from coming to Daniel. But Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help. Michael. Michael the archangel. Whose version says Michael the archangel? Yeah. Michael the archangel. Michael wasn't just Daniel's prince. We read in chapter 12, it's of, of you, of your people. So Michael the archangel was the prince over the Israelites. Just like there was a prince over Persia, we read later, there's a prince over Greece. There was also a prince over Israel. And that tells us that there are rulers, principalities, authorities, cosmic powers. There are spirits that oversee and are given jurisdiction over groups, over demographics, over territories. How often do we read in the Old and the New Testament, there are actually fallen angels and angelic beings that have authority over realms of existence. Should we go there a little bit further? Okay, go to Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10. This is what Paul writes. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10. Faster than me. So that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and the authorities in the heavenly places. Let's go to chapter 6. He writes later, verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. You, you understand that the devil has schemes. He's got plans. There are wiles. There are strategies. He's been around for a while, I'm sorry to tell you. He's been around for longer than you and I, so he knows a few things. 
but he's mad. I don't know if I could say he's mad as hell. I don't use that terminology, but maybe he is. Because he knows where his fate lies. He knows what's going to happen. He's read the book. He's read the book better than we have. He knows what's going to happen to him. And what he's trying to do is he's trying to distract and distort, dissuade, discourage God's people from knowing who we are in Christ. So he's got plans. He's trying to trip us up. There are plans. So it says that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the, here it is, the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Is that for you this morning? Have you done all to stand firm? Have you done all to stand firm? Stand therefore having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. And you can continue as it expands there. Let's go to Colossians. Let's go to Colossians, Wes, if you can. Go to Colossians, because he refers to it again. Colossians chapter, well, let's go to chapter 2, verse, let's see. No, let's go to Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. It says, Chapter 1, verse 16. Same writer Paul says, For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Pointing to visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. There is continual reference to what's going on in the heavenly realm, not just what's happening in the natural Lord, would you remind us continually the need to fix our eyes on the unseen because that's where the real battle is. Haven't you noticed that the more we pray, the more coincidence happen? <laughs> it's just a coincidence. No, we, we prayed, we prayed, we prayed. It was an angel that got Peter out of prison. But it was Peter's prayers that got the angel to do it. Pray, 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 ask, seek, knock. I shared recently this dream I had a number of years ago. It was a dream. This is a dream that I had, and it shifted my whole perspective on how I dealt um, with people in prayer, particularly as I felt to this spiritual dynamic. In this dream, I saw myself walking through the church foyer in our, in our, uh, our previous building in Malaga. I saw myself walking through the church foyer, and as I walked through the church foyer, I saw somebody there that was demonically afflicted. They, 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 they had a clear affliction. like There was a spirit, a demonic spirit that was bothering them. And in the dream, I walked past them. Like I didn't care. It didn't bother me that much. And that was a concern to me in the dream. But in the dream, what I saw was I saw like the Lord show me me wearing an army uniform with stripes on my shoulders. And I heard in the dream the words say this. The reason why you are indifferent is because you do not see as I see. And in the dream, I saw myself right there. Hang on a second. I'm a soldier. I'm a general. I I'm not just badged or equipped or authorized to this. I am able to sort this out. And right then and there, that changed how I responded. So when I got out the next day and, and from that point, I thought, my goodness, I'm actually not just, a, I'm not just some sort of physical 
being having a spiritual experience. I am a spiritual being having a physical experience. The greater reality is that we are kings of the, and, and, and queens of the Most High, and we are authorized and graced and called to bring freedom. Not long after that, I was in a church service sitting on the front row on a Sunday evening. We're in a Sunday evening service. And during worship, the team was worship leading. It was something very spiritual. Josie was probably leading at the time. We all know how spiritual Josie is. And in worship, I'm there just worshiping. And I felt in my heart, as I, I, as I do in service, I said, Lord, what are you doing? And I felt something was missing. Something wasn't right. I turned around and I saw uh, a man, a young man that was a friend of mine. And he came to church every couple of weeks, okay, coming regularly every couple of weeks. I looked at him, I thought, there's something not right here. I don't know what that is. So I just kept worshipping, and I did a double take. I had another look, a quick glance. I said, something's not right there. And he's just sitting in his chair. That's all it was. And as we were worshipping, I felt in my heart that it was a demonic affliction. Now, I'm not going to get up there, hold the mic- microphone, shunda mahanda, be nice and loud. You don't need to do that, because we carry authority in the spirit realm. And so, But this is what I did. I said, as we were worshipping, I said in uh, an audible voice, but only I could hear it myself. No one else around me could hear it. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I command any spiritual affliction, any evil spirit that is bothering, and I mentioned the guy's name, to leave right now. Get out in Jesus' name. No one else heard. But at that moment, as I got up, I, I turned around. He got up out of his seat and he left. He hasn't come back since. Is that a coincidence or a God incident? What does that point us to? That points us to the fact that your words have authority. Your words. You have an authority because you are in Christ Jesus. Do not underestimate the power of what you carry. You carry the very presence and authority of Jesus Christ himself. So how often are we trying to fight this way, not this way? Less of this, more of this. Final point. Prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. But Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I was left there with the kings of Persia and came to make you understand what is to happen to your people in the latter days. But the vision is for days yet to come. Let me keep reading and then I'm going to come back. It says in verse 15 When he had spoken to me according to these words, I turned my face toward the ground and I was mute, and behold, One in the likeness of the children of man touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and I spoke. And I said to him who stood before me, O my Lord, by reason of the vision pains have come upon me and I retain no strength. How can my Lord's servant talk with my Lord? For now no strength remains in me and no breath is left in me. Again, one having the appearance of man touched me and strengthened me. And he said, O man greatly loved, fear not, peace be with you. Be strong and of good courage. As he spoke to me, I was strengthened. And said, let my Lord speak, for you have strengthened me. Then he said, do you know why I've come to you? What's this? It says, but, but now I will return to fight against the prince of Persia. And when I go out, behold, the prince of Greece will come, or the spirit prince of Greece will come. But I will tell you what is inscribed in the book of truth. There is none who contends by my side against these except Michael, your prince. And then we see this amazing scene unfold. But 21 days, all of those things happen. There was a, an answer that was dispatched. But there was a delay in the delivery. 21 days. Have you ever ordered from Amazon before? eBay, man, sometimes I wait months for eBay. I get the great message, your order has been dispatched. (laughs) I get excited. (laughs) Next minute, 
2022, I'm still waiting. Australia Post, don't get me started on them. There is a difference between the day of dispatch and the day of delivery. Maybe you're still waiting. Maybe it has... Maybe it hasn't been 21 days for you. Maybe it's been 21 years. But just a thought, perhaps your delivery is still in transit. How often do we feel, oh, I, I, I did pray for that, but it didn't actually, it didn't happen, it didn't work. I fasted, I believed, it didn't happen, it didn't work. What we're really saying is I had a time limit on it. And it didn't come when I wanted it to come, so I gave up. Well, what if Daniel gave up on day 20? What if he stopped praying on day 20? We can just stop on day one. What if he's on day 20 and he's still yet to receive a message that showed up what was going to happen to Israel? Don't quit on 20. Don't quit on 20. Don't quit on 20 perseverance in prayer always pays off perseverance in prayer always pays off it doesn't mean you're going to get what you want just because you pray more for it you'll find a lot of the time that prayer doesn't twist God's arm or change his heart so much as it changes us how long have you been praying for something and you're finding that you are changing in the process that the answer is actually in you we want God to do that. Lord, I want the fruit to come. I want the outcome. I want the results. And God's saying, yeah, I've got something better for you. It's change in you. And that the purpose of prayer and persistence and perseverance even is not just to get stuff off God. It's to become like Him. How? Because the more that we persevere and persist, in a heartfelt, humble, contrite sense of prayer toward Him, the more our faith deepens and is tested and is strengthened. Why else does Jesus say, keep praying? Keep praying, He says in Matthew chapter 7. Luke chapter 11, He talks about it. I'm going to finish with this passage, Luke chapter 11. Verse 5, and he said to them, which of you who has a friend will go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves for a friend of mine has arrived on a journey and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within, don't bother me. The door is now shut and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. Verse 8, important. I tell you, though he will not get up and give him anything because he's his friend, it's not because it's his mate, it says, Yet because of his impudence, your version might say persistence or perseverance. I think a better translation is shameless persistence. Again, New Living Translation says that. Shameless persistence. Because of his shameless persistence, he will rise and give him whatever he needs. And I tell you, ask, it'll be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it'll be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And the one who seeks, finds and to the one who knocks it will be opened for what father among you if his son asks for a fish will instead of a fish give him a serpent or if he asks for an egg will give him a scorpion if you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will the heavenly father give the holy spirit to those who ask him It's not because it's his friend knocking at the door in the middle of the night asking for some bread for his children. It's not because they know each other. What Jesus is saying, he, this is the context of prayer. Just before this, the disciples say, Lord, teach us how to pray. Not teach us how to prophesy, not teach us how to preach. The, the disciples say, teach us how to pray. That's how important it was. Teach us to pray. Jesus says, all right, all right. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Goes down there. And then he gives this story. So he says, it's because of his impudence. It's because of his perseverance. It's because of his shameless persistence. Knock. Ask. Seek. Knock. Ask. Seek. Keep knocking, baby. Keep knocking. Lord, I'm waiting. 
It's been two days. Please show me something. I pray for a breakthrough. Lord, what about my parents? What about my kids? What about my spouse? Day 10. Day 12. Day 20. Day 30. Day 60. Two years later. Five years later. Ten years later. Thirty years later. How long is it going to take? Let the river flow, brother. Let the river flow. Let it flow. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't stop. Your father hears you. He knows. What is it that you've been asking him for? What is it that you've been praying for? Your answer is on the way. Don't quit on 20. Finances, relationships, physical ailment, emotional torment, addictive behaviors. What is it? Don't stop. Keep asking. Keep knocking. Keep seeking. Your answer is on its way to be delivered. could be one day away from your miracle. You could just be one day away from your breakthrough. Think of it this way. Daniel was not told that on day 21, he'll get his answer. He wasn't told that, was he? He didn't say, you pray for 21 days and on the 21st day, you're going to get something. He just started praying. He didn't have an end goal. He didn't have an end line. Can you imagine the heart he must have had? Lord, you still haven't shown me. You still haven't, you haven't shown me yet. What if it had taken 30 days or 40 days, 60 days? What if it had taken so long with no end in sight? And we are called to have the same faith, the same determination, the same grit, the same trust in God. He may not give you what you're asking for today or tomorrow, but will you trust Him anyway? There could be a hindrance. For whatever reason, God in His sovereignty and His providence could be putting a pause on you getting what you want when you want it. And dare I say, His greatest desire is to make us like Jesus. Then give us what we want and become spoiled brats every time we ask for it. Can we pray? Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to get around and be encouraged, inspired, and even challenged by the faith of Daniel. Lord, would you help us be people that are humble in our hearts, that we do see that the greater reality is the unseen one in the spirit realm, but Lord, also that we would persevere in prayer because you purpose great things in us, not just for us. Father, I ask that as a church community, we would be ones who step out in faith in this season like no other. We are certainly living in the end times. And we thank you that we are beginning to see the very things that have been prophesied about thousands of years ago, millennia ago. We're seeing start those things unfold now in our midst. But help us to not be distracted. May we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. We thank you in Jesus' name. We hope you've been blessed by that word. Take some time to process through with God how He would like for you to apply this message throughout your week. Up next is what's happening at Grace Life, dates and details. Join us one of our encounter nights in Malaga Hub for worship and prayer together. There's power in prayer. 
So make sure you're there. It's an awesome opportunity to sit at the feet of Jesus. And also, if you haven't yet known or want to learn how to pray, this is also an awesome opportunity for you. One of the things that we do to reach out, to help and to serve our communities through our bread tables in Malaga and in Ellenbrook. Details are currently on your screens, but this is just an opportunity for people who need bread or some groceries to come around and have that available to take as they need. Also, if you're part of a Facebook group where you think there might be people that might need to have this information or might want to pass this information along, feel free to share these posts. They're there for anybody um, to have access to. Hey, Grace Life Seniors, your next morning tea is coming up on the 13th of April, Wednesday from 9.30 in the morning. It will be held at the Malaga Hub. And if you would like any more information, please send us an email to seniors at gracelife.com. .au. And please don't forget to bring a plate to share. Grace Life men, make sure that you sign up at the information desk. Also pick up one of the information sheets that is going to be uh, letting you know all about men's camp. It's happening at the end of April, Friday to the Sunday. We're going to have bonfires and a few other activities. For any more information, the details are all on the screens or you can go to information desk also you can scan that qr code as well that will take you to the website where all of this information is there for you to have if you're fairly new to our church family we want to welcome you and if you'd like to get involved or even get connected some more in specific groups or specific ministries that you are not yet aware of we'd love to get you connected to those ministries so make sure to fill out one of these cards so we know how to contact you and where to connect you into. It will help us in serving you that way. Make sure to drop it in at the back of the auditorium in one of the giving boxes. One of the ways that we engage in worship is through the act of giving. And if Grace Life is your home, church, we want to encourage you to join us in this joy of giving. God loves a cheerful giver. And it's more about the heart than it is about the dollar. So make sure that you do pray and engage with God on how He would have you partner with us in this joy of giving. Hey, if you'd like any more information about anything that is happening throughout the life of our church, make sure to check out our website. There's information there, our social media, Facebook and Instagram, as well as a Facebook group is available. Um, you can also check out our app. Thank you for watching this online service replay. We hope you were blessed by this message and we pray God's blessings over your family and friends throughout this week.